guys, Paleo Greenbird here. I hope everyone is doing awesome. Finally, a beautiful day here in Maine. I don't know what the temperature is, but um, I'm not wearing three layers, so I'm pretty excited about that. I thought to myself, what can I do today to take advantage of this weather? And the first thing that came to my mind was flint napping some of this beautiful Davis Creek obsidian that I got from Will Self. This is another slab. I know I complain all the time about obsidian. It's a love-hate relationship. I love working with it. I hate the fact that it makes me bleed and makes a huge mess and I track it in my house. Everybody steps on it and I get yelled at. Other than that, it's great. But anyway, I did want to break into this. I've had it for a little bit and just want to see what it looks like. This will be the first time. I've never napped Davis Creek. So I thought maybe I'd just do a quick little slab here. Maybe have time left in the day to do a little bit of percussion. <clears throat> Good way to just take your mind off of really anything. Flint napping is so therapeutic. There's so much going on nowadays to distract us, kind of bring us down. And it's nice to have something that just makes you hyper focus on nothing but it. And to me, that's what flint napping is. Oops. So, need to sharpen this a little bit, but also. You know, not to get off on a tangent, but I, I, about two weeks ago, no, 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 about a week and a half ago, I had a pretty big fall off my porch. I probably should have gone to the hospital, but I didn't. And my hand is still, my, my wrist and my, the side of my hand and the top of my hand is still recovering. Um, I fell and hit my head. My shiner is pretty much gone, but I saw stars. Kind of an embarrassing story, so I'll keep it to myself. But anyway, that is why I have not been doing a lot of napping lately. If I was smart, I'd be taking this towards my leg. Now, I'm taking pretty aggressive flakes. This is probably more aggressive than what I should. I mean, look at those deltas I'm creating. They're, you know, pretty aggressive. I should be doing a better job just skinning this. On the first pass, there we go, that's a little better. But I'm trying to do this quick. Ooh, that was a nice long flank. Trying to keep them long as I get to the base. The ones on the, on the tip are <clears throat> overshot flakes. If I really wanted to focus on good good convexity, I probably would not want those to be overshot flakes, but maybe about a little more than halfway. But I just don't want to stall it out. So let's hit the other side here, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Lots of motorcycles today. Everyone's taking advantage of the good weather. Maybe we'll keep this long, but even if I break this, lately I've been kind of digging smaller points. They're so much more functional. Honestly, they're better for necklaces. But one thing you never hear a flint napper say is, can you send me some shorter blanks? Because once that comes out of your mouth, you can never take it back. So we're almost done. The first pass on this one side. I'm going to regrind even though I'm Pretty well ground. And we'll do the pass, the second pass, well the first pass, but on the second side. <clears throat> Still making my Atlantle video, so don't give up on that. 
I'm just kind of going a different direction with that, so you'll have to wait and see. It's coming out pretty good, though. I'm going to need to harvest some material to make a dart. I think I have some. I think I have an old dart that I can refurbish. Which is probably what I'll do. Or I'll just find a sapling around here and take it down and use that. Let it kind of season as I use it. I mean, ideally you want to have it seasoned before you even make it, but... I don't really want to spend that much time. Yeah, see, even when I'm using my leg here, I even get better... Like, not flake patterns, but better, um, you know, patterns with my deltas. It's really the best way to do it. But sometimes I get in a hurry and I cheat. It's probably not the best thing to do, considering that my wrist already hurts. What I'll probably do after I get this done is maybe a little bit of indirect, because that seems to be a little bit easier on my hand. bit of an island right here on the bottom, but I will get that. That'll be part of my first pass. So I'm going a little bit fast here, just because I tend to chit-chat a lot and drag this out. Uh, yeah, let's start a little bit down here. Lower. Oof. It's kind of scary. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. Tip is getting a little bit uh, thicker in that one spot. And then what is below it, which is never a good sign. So I'm actually going to take a quick second and fix that. There we go. That way I can avoid shock. All right. And let's get back at it. So my first pass was a little bit sloppy. And that's why I have to go back here. But I'm not worried about it. I'll fix it. In fact, I could just I could flip this if I wanted to. And just fix those you know, really aggressive deltas as I'm doing the other side. It's not ideal because you might lose you know, a little bit of the evenness or not really symmetry, but evenness of uh, you know both sides being the same uh, you know not thickness but actually thinness. Also, remember to stagger those flakes so that you have those little like mini island deltas in between to fix any mistakes that you make. Had to be a long one. Oh, this one has to be a long one too. It's a little short on the other side, but we got it. Ooh, that one was short. Didn't do myself any favors there. That's all right. We got plenty of time to fix this, and that's half the fun. So I got those done. Now let's do the base. Some people would just shoot the base right across. And uh, ideally, that's probably the best thing to do. But I usually just take a couple of quick flakes straight up. And it usually cleans up nicely. By the time you do your shaping and your notching, I have never found it to be too much of an issue as far as interfering with my flake pattern. Let's work on the other. Let's see. I'm 
going to start with the thick side first and I'll come back and tighten up that other stuff. Making sure my the groove of my pad is clean because that will cause disaster. Oh, that was terrible. You could hear it. You could hear how terrible that was, but that's all right. Sounded better. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's see if that the sun is catching that. Look at that nice like army green color. Olive drab, I guess is what they call it, right? That's pretty cool. That's really cool. So like I said, I was a little bit quick and sloppy on that first pass. I'm going to slow down a little bit, take my time on these next passes because I have been getting them a lot thinner, which of course increases your chances of breaking them. Boy, this is beautiful obsidian. I can see why people choose to slab this instead of just working as a small. Although, boy, I bet it'd be fun to work as a small. So you can see my, my uh, flaker's not super sharp. I might change that. But for now, I think we're good. Except for that piece of obsidian biting me. There we go. Let's see if I can get a point this time without my signature raptor beak, shall we? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come off and I'm going to I'm going to hit all these high deltas because ideally in a perfect world you wouldn't have those. What that's going to do is it's going to basically bring this back to a you know a squared edged slab for me. Again, I should be using my hips more, or maybe uh, my thighs more than I am. But uh, my vision's not great, so sometimes I find myself riding up closer to my head. Not good for a lot of different reasons. Not, it's not good because it's not going to produce good results, but also because it's getting that glass dust right in your face. And um, even on windy days, you know, you can tell. All right, so that's not bad. We cleaned up that edge. Good edge to start over with, and you can kind of see how that differs from the thicker edge. Again, I'm just going to work those deltas on both sides. Paying really close attention to the tip and the base. Those are two places that can get you in trouble if you're not careful. I mean, I know, you probably already know, but <clears throat> if your tip gets thicker than the middle, or even if it's just thicker than it, what's below it, it can really, really contribute to end shock. There we go. That was a good flink. Yep, so you can hear the good flakes. I don't, even, I don't even have to check. When I hear it, I can tell what, by the sound that it was a good flake. Again, just as a review, you're not pressing deep into that because it'll snap it in the groove, kind of like a, gar, um, a bar chord playing guitar. And there's a lot of people out there that just do one side and flip over to the other. I'm a huge believer that if you have to flip it back to the other side, to correct a delta that's just too high, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Ouch. Let's see here. I'm on this side. Let's see? It's easy to get disoriented. Okay, so. There's a high delta there. And there. And this side here. Yep, 
Yeah, these slabs are real fun. They can get addictive. For me, I find that, you know, I make sure I balance it with my percussion so I don't lose those skills either. Now I'm trying to learn indirect percussion, so I've got a lot on my plate. Go. Trying to make sure that my tip doesn't get out of control. Because it can real fast. So, I just recently for those that don't know, I just picked up, um, you know, some birds, some more birds. Ah, there it goes. Damn it. There's that tip. I just lost that tip. Son of a gun. It's alright, that was too long anyway. So, I just picked up 30 quail. They're about four weeks from being able to be outside in the um, in the hutches. I picked up nine more chickens because most of mine got taken out by a bunch of raccoons. But I took care of that. So my plan is to be pretty self-sufficient when it comes to eggs and meat. I might get some rabbits as well. I don't know if anybody else has noticed it, but boy, when you go to the grocery store, you're not paying what you did in 2020 or 2019. Part of that failure with the tip was I probably should should have switched to a, a um, smaller pressure flaker, but that tip sort of got away away from me because I'm working kind of fast. So I've got the quail and the chickens. Still debating the rabbits because they're so messy and stinky. My plan is to keep a breeding pair of the quail that is in the house. So if something happens to my quail, I still have a breeding pair. I don't have a rooster for my chickens, uh, primarily because, I don't know, I have laying hens, I don't have meat chickens, and everybody that I talk to has told me that they're very tough and not extremely appetizing, and processing a chicken is a, it's a task. It's a messy task. It's not hard. It's just messy and time-consuming. Quail are much, much easier to process. And they're tasty. From what I've been told, if you let them go about three or four weeks past, well, about, yeah, two to four weeks past what you would typically harvest them at, which is about six weeks. No, I'm sorry, which is about eight, eight weeks. Then um, they get fattier. And they get, there's more flavor in them. So I have decided to go that route. So. Just continuing to go down these deltas and thin this out. And I'm getting a couple of steps, but. I'm going to switch over to that smaller flaker here pretty soon. I'd be curious. I know I don't have a ton of subscribers, but if you're out there and you've got livestock of some sort that are easy to take care of and work well for you, let me know. I mean, I can't have cows or anything like that. I've had goats. I may get, may have goats again. I do plan on getting them again at some point. I don't exactly know when. They're also a lot of work, but if you can get the milk and you can 
Okay, so this tip here that broke off, I'm gonna try and thin that by going to the side. I mean, I, what, my only other alternative, sorry, is to uh, try and take downward flakes towards the base. Could do that. And it still probably wouldn't affect my flake pattern because I still have plenty of passes to go across. But um, I don't know. I'm just gonna try and do it the correct way. If there's even such a thing. Yeah, and... Strike that. Take a flake right down towards the base. Kind of tough to grind those uh, broken edges. You just got to make sure you get them really, really good. That's one of the things that makes obsidian a little bit tough to, use, to work, especially if you're using spalls, is that, you know, it's such a clean, like, sharp, not sharp, but um, smooth break. <coughs> that it can make it a little bit challenging to, to get a good grind on it. So I'm going to go easy on it. There we go. And the reason I'm not too worried about the flake pattern is because, I mean, look at it, it's, it's square on the tip, so it's going to have to come in and, you know, be shaped into a point anyway, so I'm not so concerned about that. I just want to thin it out so that it doesn't become thicker than the rest of the piece, cause end shock, and really give me the same problem it gave me the first time, which is the tip breaking off, because that's what, exactly what will happen. You know, and like I said, if you are really good and diligent and take your time and just do one pass at a time, you probably will avoid that problem. I'm trying to put the gas on a little bit here and see what I can do. Put the gas on. That doesn't even make sense. All right. It's about time to switch to that smaller flaker. Flip it over, and once I get this pass done, I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, see, those short flakes are not good because that means that they're stacking on the other side. Not too bad, but that's what that means. Oops. Let's move down. Yeah, see that sliding noise? Not good. Don't work into that. Come back and get it either from the other side or angle your next flake into it. See, that's a little better. So you can see we've got those edges relatively thin. They're not, I'm not done with them yet. There was a time when I would zigzag that. <laughs> and you could, you could zigzag that right now and, and get a good, like kind of like beveled point. But I'm trying to work on getting them thin. And don't forget about that base. Yeah, I still need to address that base. I gave these, both these edges their due passes, but I did not, I have not addressed the base yet, at least with this last pass. So anyway, back to the quail. I think it's a really good investment because, uh, you know, for one thing, from the time they hatch to the time they're ready to eat is about six to eight weeks. So, I mean, that's a huge asset to have if you're ever in a situation, I don't know, but whatever it is, you, you name the situation where you need to be able to have something to barter. Maybe a job loss or something like that. Plenty of food. As long as you keep a couple of roosters and a couple of hens separate so that you can make sure if something hits your flock, you've got the ability to replenish that. The eggs, I love quail eggs. 
I don't care that they're small, they're so good. Alright, so... Alright. So again, here's the edges. Here's the base. So I think now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch down to a smaller flaker. I'm going, to, I'm going to try and get as much of that sawed edge off as I can before I get to the zigzag stage because I just, you know, I think that will improve the look of the point. And when I get to this point, I don't even use the groove of the pad. And that's kind of a technique that I, I saw Dave Tembears use when he first started. He would use his wallet. And I was thinking to myself, he's using his wallet. You know, there's no groove there. But when you get down thin enough, it does work. You just have to be careful because the further you run the flake, it's going to stall probably in there. I mean, some people will use leather, so I'll probably get somebody in the comments that says that's not true. But for me, using this rubber pad, if I try and take too long of a flake, a lot of times I will get a little bit of a stall. But, um, you know, this is thin enough to where now I'm just trying to get rid of that edge. And I like to keep a little bit of convexity if I can. And it's not, it's not always easy to do, to tell you the truth. A lot of times those real super flat points, you know, it's easier to get those than to keep some convexity. And again, someone like Dave Timbers does a great job keeping that convexity in his points. So far, so good. In fact, I'm going to flip over to the groove right here. Yeah, no, I'm not. Sometimes if I feel like I need to take a longer flake, I will, but I'm not going to do that so close to the tip. You know, for obvious reasons. It just creates more opportunity for, to snap it. I mean, it can be done, but that's when technique is super critical. take that chance. Oop, that shot right back at me. That's why you wear your safety glasses, kids. Now I'm closer to the base. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to that groove. Get some of these thicker spots. I can do that. Now that I'm closer to the base. And again, I really should be putting this in my thighs and squeezing, but, you know, my wrist hurts and I'm a little off my game. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm locking, sort of like an issue stick, I'm locking against my, my gut and using that instead of my leg so I can, so I can have it a little bit closer and um, have a little bit more control. There we go. I'm getting nice, nice flakes. Do the other side, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, let's grind. Got a little friend out there saying hi. Or saying, get the hell out of my property, one or the other. Just swear on my page. Okay, there we go. This is going fantastic. I should not have said that. Ooh, and that's why. I think I'm getting really close to where I need to zigzag. And I'm going to zigzag before I even shape that point. Because I know that I'm not going to, this isn't going to be the shape of the point. So why bother worrying about that point right now? That bit again. If you've never napped or you're new to napping and you're watching this channel, you will bleed. Just count on it. 
you'll probably bleed less and less the more you do, but you will bleed. So buy lots of band-aids. And that's not, you know, to say that a little cut is going to bother you and you'll need a band-aid for it, but the blood's very sticky. So it can actually affect the performance of your napping if you get it on the stone. Alright, so we're ready to zigzag. I'm going to show you, show you what this looks like. There are a ton of ways to do this, so I am by no means... Now, this is not an instructional video. This is just what I do and how I do it. After grinding, I think I'm going to take a little bit more off the base here. I'm going to drop down to my smaller flaker, smaller nail. Could use a little bit of sharpening. Oh, that's not good. I don't know if that was a flaw in the stone or a flaw in the napper, but it happened. That's okay though, because when we zigzag that, that'll probably... Yeah, I don't know. The way that came off, that could be a flaw that I created. I don't think it was a techni uh, technique flaw. Alright, so anyway, let's just get right to the zigzagging. So. See how thin that is, and how thin that is. There's not much left there, and how thin the base is, too, really. And now I'm just going to go by, I'm going to use the solid part of my, of my pad, my small flaker. And I'm not going to sharpen it just yet. But I'm going to start at the tip. I'm just going to find a smile, find a low spot. I'm going to start right there. And usually you have to flip back and forth. Sometimes you do have to get the same side more than once. I'm sure we'll see that here shortly. You can see I'm sort of working into a stack there. But chances are when I start to shape that point, I'm probably going to start digging into that stack anyway. And it's so thin that it's not like I'm trying to drive a flake into the stack. I'm really just popping off the stone, the edge. So I don't anticipate that being a problem. Here's an example where I have to hit the same side twice. Just do what makes sense. There's no hard and fast rules in flint napping. In fact, some of the greatest nuggets of knowledge I've picked up from people who are new to napping because they don't know the rules and they don't care about it. They just want to learn the skill. And again, you don't have to go this fast. I'm just doing my best to make this not the most long, boring video that you watch today. So when I look at this, I see that my tip is already, like the, up here, has, is thinner than the rest of it. So that tells me that that's a great place to start. Let's find a low point. Well, first I'm going to take some off that tip. So it doesn't get away on me. And now let's work our way down. barely taking. I'm not taking flakes right now. I'm just basically popping off. It, it will still uh, build pressure and pop a little bit of a flake off, but it's really just, you know, you're popping off sideways instead of down and in. At least that's what I'm doing right now. And that's, what was that? That's the benefit of, um, you know, really getting these as thin as you can before you start to zigzag, is that you did, you did the work ahead of time. Oh, that was a little aggressive. There we go. 
you know, sometimes it's a little hard to resist. Try and take those big chunks, but you don't want to do that because now is not the time. Unless it is, if you're looking at the stone and you need a big chunk, then take it. But for me, right now is not the time. Is it noisy today? Everybody's out having fun. And here's a time when I do need to take a little bit of a flake, because I've got a little bit too much convexity on that ear. So I need to get that high spot off. So I'll take a little bit of a flake. Not much, though. Not even enough to flip my pad. So this is what we have right now. I can't see anything, so I'm, I'm hoping that the camera's picking this up. No saw marks. No saw marks, no saw marks, right? <laughs> oh, actually there are saw marks, I didn't get that yet. Let's get that. <laughs> Still gonna use my smaller nail. Another corner that has a high spot, although now the high spot is flipped upside down. I'm gonna try and take that. Don't need to use my groove for that. Oh, that was close, I kind of felt like that was a bad decision. Put a lot of pressure on that. Could have ended differently. Let's start over here. That's one thing I really like about flip napping too, is it doesn't always come out the way you think it's going to come out. Sometimes, like in the instance where that, I don't know, that weird thing popped off there. I'm not sure how to explain why that happened, but doesn't look like a bad flake. It looks like it just like there was a crack in there. But I know there wasn't because that very, very rarely happens with obsidian, especially slabs. So it's most likely an error that I created in the mapping process. Maybe it was a flake that didn't come out all the way. I thought it was on there solid, and in actuality, it, maybe I could have popped it off. Hard to tell. It doesn't matter. It's like any working on anything else, you always have problems that come up outside of what your intended uh, process is, your expectations, I guess. So there we go. So here it is. All right, and the base too. So now at this point, what I'm going to do, I think, I got this thin enough, I'm just going to start shaping it. And I think I'm going to jump back up to the bigger flaker. So I'm just, um, I think I'm going to grind it though. It never hurts to grind because you're getting rid of all that loose stuff that does not want to be there anyway. If it doesn't want to be there, all it's going to do is the same thing that happened down here. It's going to disrupt your flake. It's going to prevent it from traveling. I mean, I know we're not flaking, but you know the point, the, the whole point remains the same. It's going to pop off, and it's not going to pop off what you wanted it to pop off. Not to mention, it helps you from cutting yourself. I mean, this is glass, after all. I'm sorry about all the noise. If the days keep going like this, I'll get back in the woods again. Right. Let's start. I always like to address the... If there's any, even any inkling of a turtle, I like to address that if I can. But I do need to shape this a little bit, don't I? So let's... Start there. Let's try 
trying to shape this a little bit. In fact, I could even lay it flat if I wanted to and go straight up and down, because that's essentially what I'm doing. and get the square tip off of that point. I think we're ready to do that. This is where we don't want to rush. Take your time, look at it. Look at the symmetry. Especially with these broken off tips because that's oftentimes where you'll get that kind of eagle beak kind of look, and I know it doesn't just happen to me, I've seen it happen to other people too. Some people are just better at getting rid of it than I am. There we go. Let's see, we're going to make that those steps disappear. Sometimes you even have to look at it after every flake. Both sides too, because <laughs> sometimes one side will look good, but not the other one. Have to watch that center line because every time you take a flake off, it'll raise that edge in one, one way or the other. Yeah, so I just narrowed this one a little bit. I didn't really. that off the way I should have. But that happens. It's nothing to be, it's no big deal. I need a smaller flaker is what I need also. Let's raise that up a little bit. When I say raise that up, I'm talking about my center line. All right, so that's good for right now. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zigzag this base and I'm going to try and get rid of that weird funky area, but I'm not really too worried about getting rid of all of it because I think when I start to make my notches, some of that will just kind of disappear because I'm going to lose width anyway, most likely. You know, not, not in the side notches, I guess I don't want to be confusing about that, but if I do a basal notch on there that will, you know, kind of affect that. 
I'm actually going to switch to the groove on this one. Oh, there we go, progress. So you can probably see I'm slowing down a little bit. Let's grind it again. So you can see, oops, so, you can, so you can see that um, this side here kicks out a little bit. Let's see if I put it this way, it might be easier. So I definitely want to do something about that. And that seems to be something that I'm, I do kind of struggle with. So if anybody has any advice there, you know, let me know in the comments because I know it's just a matter of just looking at it and bringing it to symmetry, but for some reason I just have a hard, I struggle with that. I think it was the same thing with my notches, it's just now I have a different way of doing my notches. So I've kind of gotten rid of that issue with my notches, but... See, because when you take out that part that's kicking out, it kind of gives you that, that curved shape, so... But you want to be careful because you don't want to correct too far up. So if you correct from the top too much, you know, then you just lose everything. So it's almost like it's the same thing with the base. If you if you correct too much from the base, you start to lose your shape. So it's almost like you gotta just take bites out of the middle to get that corrected. Got a bee flying around me. Good thing I'm not a flower. All right, I think this time we're gonna be good. I hope. Sometimes, sometimes just little itty bitty bites is all you need. Look at that! I took a flake that time. So let's grind. Are we ready to grind or a little more? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Let's get this real square. couple minor adjustments and just keep looking at it. It's not the quickest part of the point. But it's pretty critical, pretty crucial, rather. Still being cognizant of the center line. Sorry, I can't talk today. So, a lot of times that correction entails just bringing up one end of the base, one side of the base, rather. So let's grind this. Again, getting 
everything off the point that doesn't want to be there. So this is where we're at so far. Relatively thin, pretty acceptable symmetry. This side does need to come in just a smidge and this tip needs to come up that way. So I think that's what we'll do. And I'm going to switch over to a horseshoe nail. It's a larger horseshoe nail. Works really good for fine-tuning stuff. Works really good if you need to drive a flake on something that's already real thin. You know, some of those risky problem areas. I need something with more grip for this thicker stuff. on that. Sometimes I'd rather shorten my point a little bit and keep a good center line than, um, you know, allow, you know, either a, a, t a turtled point or you know, an otherwise unacceptable point to, or tip. Okay, so I got some shaping to do. I'm basically starting over with my shaping now. flip it over to the groove. I'm actually driving flakes here too.
I think we are ready to notch this. I mean, there's always touch-up that you can do. You'll drive yourself crazy looking at it. But sometimes it's better to just say enough is enough. It is what it is. Sometimes the rock can deceive you too. It'll look really good on one side, and then you flip it over and it doesn't look that great. It could be because there's some transparency or translucency, if, that even, is that, if that's even a word, in that uh, portion that you're looking at. So sometimes, you know, it's good to just, in my opinion, get it so it looks good. Always touch up when you're notching. Oh, I do see it. this is part that needs to be fixed. But then we're done. Minor adjustments. to be that time of day where the sun's getting behind me, making it a little bit difficult to stay out of the shadows. But that's just another excuse, right? Alright, so I think we have a decent point. Well, we need to put the notches in it, but let's take a look and see what it looks like. Come on, camera, focus. All right, guys, so I'm not sure why the camera wouldn't focus uh, before, but I, did, I got it to focus now. This is what we're left with. Pretty thin edge on both sides. You know, still a little bit of a beak there on that one side, so maybe I'll try and fix that, but it'll probably be a pendant anyway, so I'm not too worried about it, but I do want to work on getting those uh, thick spots off on the tip there. I mean, I could just blast that tip off and shorten it a little bit. It'll probably be just fine. But uh, I'm not going to do that right now. We'll come back and put notches in it, you know, maybe in an hour or two when the sun starts to get, uh, you know, in a better, better place where it's not going to be right behind me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope, hope everybody's doing awesome and enjoying the weather. And until next time, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.